Hey guys, Levelcap here. Today we're going to be doing a hardware review on the Live Gamer Portable. If you've ever wanted to record your gameplay from a console or PC, this is a piece of hardware that can do that with relative ease. Now the really big benefit of this device is one, it's portable. You can basically take it around and record somebody else's gameplay if you'd like. Maybe you're going to a gaming convention and you want to record one of the latest games there. This device can actually do it without another PC to record to. You can record to an SD card. And two, if you're using this device to record PC gameplay, it will not slow down the PC that is gaming. That's something that software-only recording setups cannot provide. Fraps or DxToy definitely hit the frame rate of your computer while recording, and this is one nice way around it. The best way to set this device up is using HDMI cables. It does have component converters for it. Uh, then you plug the thing into your computer with a USB cable to provide it power. And you can also record directly to the computer with that USB cable. If you don't want to record to that computer, you can put an SD card slot in there. You can either record to the same computer that you're gaming on, or you can record to an entirely different computer that you're using for editing. You can even stream with the card. So a cool setup with this would to would be to have a desktop computer set up for gaming and maybe a laptop next to it running your uh, Live Gamer Portable and you could stream from that or record to your laptop. Now I'm going to cut over to some gameplay here. This is recorded at um, 60 kilobytes per second. This is the highest bit rate that the card offers. You can reduce the bit rate and there is a noticeable visual difference when you reduce the bit rate but it also becomes a lot easier to edit with a lower bit rate. The card provides you uh, the option to record in both mp4 format and TS or sometimes known as MTS format. Uh, sadly the TS format doesn't seem to load audio into Vegas when I try and edit it. The audio is definitely linked to the video file because it plays in media player but for some reason Vegas doesn't seem to recognize the TS audio format which is unfortunate because TS is a lot easier to edit with. A neat feature of the Live Gamer cards is that uh, you can record a audio channel separately from the video audio. So you can have your gameplay audio completely separate from, say, your commentary audio. So if I'm talking with friends in a game, uh, I can actually record all of that commentary on a different audio channel and uh, then decide later if I want to put it into the game or change the volume uh, independently. This is really great for editing. Sometimes you'll be having a uh, awesome gameplay but you hate the commentary and you just want the gameplay. Well that's easy. You just don't load in the extra audio file. This is something that a few other programs offer but it's just really nice to have it with a capture card. Now the Live Gamer Portable actually looks pretty cool. It's a nice small design uh, and it has a very cool looking blue button that glows when you plug it into a USB port. Now what's nice about this blue button is that it will launch the recording software, Record Central, and it will also start and stop recording. So if you like, you can plug in the capture device to say your laptop or even the same PC you're gaming on put the capture card near your keyboard or near your mouse. When you're ready to start recording, you just hit the button. And when you're ready to stop, you just hit the button again. It sort of pulses when you're recording to let you know that the device is actually recording. I really like this feature and it's nice to have some sort of tactile button there rather than uh, something that you have to map to your keyboard. Now Record Central is a nice piece of software that has really gone through a lot of changes for the better since its release. When it first came out it was definitely rough around the edges, some bugs here and there, the recording format wasn't as nice, the clarity wasn't quite as nice, but what Avermedia has been doing is they've been making all of their capture devices function on Record Central and they've been putting all their engineering, their software engineering efforts into this one piece of software. So now this one piece of software can use all their different pieces of hardware. Uh, they can record to multiple formats now. Uh, and you have a lot of cool little options in there like audio bitrate and stuff. There have been some options that have been added and then taken away like the ability to control the brightness of your, record of your recording and other things like that. Um, I guess some of the settings weren't quite roughed out when they put them in so they took some of them out. I look forward to see the continual development of Record Central. I think it's good but it's not excellent quite yet there. Again like I mentioned how the TS video format doesn't seem to bring audio into Vegas. I think there's a few different uh, tweaks that they could make to some of their encoding software. Now the one gripe that people have with capture cards is the inability to really control some of this 
frame tearing. Now frame tearing is basically when your game is playing at a certain frame rate, say my game is rendering at 70 frames per second, but my software is recording at 30 frames per second. Well it's not going to record whole frames, it's going to record like part of one frame and then part of the, ne the next frame. And if you watch this gameplay when I move around quickly, you can see a little line that goes down the screen here and there. And that's frame tearing. It's something that doesn't bother me too much personally, but it is something that software recording programs that are recording from the same PC can sort of negate. It would be cool if they could figure out a way to implement this into capture cards. I don't know if it's possible or how easy it would be, but if they could get rid of frame tearing somehow, that would really uh, put this capture card on the level of some of the best looking software recording programs out there. Now, in my quest to sort of find the best capture card or the best recording setup for my specific needs, I've gone through multiple different capture cards from different brands. Uh, I've definitely landed on Avermedia. I think those are some of my favorite capture cards, but regardless of what capture card you choose in the end, you are probably going to go through a few struggles here and there with setting up the card, trying to figure out what cables to plug into what uh, port and just how to set up your computer settings to get the best audio and the best video format and all that stuff. It can be a little bit daunting at first. I recommend checking out the forums. Avermedia has some decent forums on there with a lot of people with long discussion threads talking about trying to get the best image quality, the best audio quality, uh, what setup works best for them. Uh, it's a good resource and I recommend checking it out. So ultimately, the Live Gamer Portable is a great capture card. As far as I can tell, it can do everything just as well as the PCI version, and it even has a few extra options, like the ability to capture to an SD card. I highly recommend checking out this product if you're interested in recording your video gameplay. I've been using Avermedia capture cards for a long time, and I think the Live Gamer Portable is basically the best product that they offer now. The product will be linked in the video description, so thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time. This is Level Cap, signing off.